so arterial and venous catheter insertion coming to the after the airway management invasive arterial blood pressure measure, measurements continuous reading of the arterial pressure wave form this has become a, a standard hemodynamic monitoring in numerous cl clinical situations so the uh, there are three techniques catheter over the needle without transfixing the artery and catheter over the needle with transfixing the artery and then the catheter over the uh, wire that is a selinger technique so most of the time in the intensive care unit we have uh, a flow sphere like a flow switch so with that so we uh, we keep like we give mild extension uh, to the hand and then uh, and then you uh, and then you enter and you see the blood flow and slightly withdraw the needle and thread the catheter uh, or sometimes you can do with the guide wire with the guide wire you locate the artery first that's what they do in the cath labs first they identify the artery they put the catheter and then over the over the guide wire they thread the sheath support the wrist uh, wrist and immobilize uh, it in a slight uh, dorsiflexion palpate the artery infiltrate with the local anesthetic the catheter over the needle unit is advanced at the site where the strongest pulse can be felt and at a angle shallower than 45 degrees in a short quick movements aiming for the middle of the artery when back flush appears lower the unit lower the unit to 30 degrees and slightly advance it advance the catheter while using rotational movements so connect to the extensions make sure lines are completely free of air check the arterial line aspirates easily and flush with saline 0.9 percent connect transducer to monitor and check the trace so this is the equipment you you have the 20 20 gauge con cannula syringe needle for the local anesthetic extension and three way uh, three way to connect cannula dispenser with screen preparation and extension to transducer sterile dressing so recommended approach uh, for the ca arterial cannulation initial uh, steeper angle and then shallower angle for insertion of the cannula or to the guide wire this is the better uh, better method and recommended approach to keep the arterial line central venous catheterization central venous catheterization are the mainstay of fluid management intravenous medications and if the patient requires concentrated electrolyte administration and if the patient requires total parenteral nutrition and if the patient requires cvp monitoring we don't have any other option other than going for central venous catheterization and cannulation sites the most commonly used uh, uh, cannulation sites are internal jugular vein external jugular vein is little rare subclavian vein is common femoral vein is common but i don't encourage and we don't encourage in, in our emergency or intensive care unit so this is the procedure trally for the central line insertion you have a sterile drape and you must remember to follow the bundle care bundle compliance for for anything for intubation for central line so you have in the bundle component central line bundle you have uh, insertion bundle uh, at the time of uh, before insertion and what anti uh, septic measures you have to take insertion bundle and then you have to you have a maintenance bundle like that you have to follow and then you should have the compliance for your bundles uh, your central line bundle your wrap bundle and your cotti bundle this is the procedure trally for the central line this is a sterile drape and the syringe and needle for the local anesthetic needle syringe for the puncture tray with the skin preparation application and, and uh, normal saline flush scalpel suture guide wire dilator three lumen central line catheter is the is is the required um, all these things are required in your central line uh, kit so uh, when it comes to the anatomy of the internal jugular and external jugular veins so this is the lateral head of the stenocleidomastoid and this is the medial head of the stenocleidomastoid and then you see the origin of internal jugular vein and this is the external jugular vein and anatomy of the sub when it comes to the subclavian vein subclavian vein it uh, it goes under the clavicle so uh, if you look at uh, one third medial one third and lateral two thirds and then you identify the trachea 
you slightly go and hit the trachea when you get the bone under the uh, and slightly uh, under uh, like uh, uh, slightly different uh, downward angulation you go towards uh, sternal notch while going you aspirate the blood and then if you get a free flow of uh, blood then you can put the guide wire and then over the guide wire we you can always thread the central line catheter so this is the anatomy of the femoral vein so femoral vein femoral artery femoral nerve is is there from medial to lateral so whenever you are keeping femoral line you must palpate for femoral artery and then take a call so what is the technique technique whenever possible central venous cannulation has to be performed under the ultrasound guidance veins are easily distinguished from the arteries because they are collapsible when slight pressure is applied with an ultrasound transducer and don't show pulsatile flow if the doppler mode is used so you can use pulsatile flow by using doppler and you can see uh, you you can find out whether it is collapsible with slight pressure then it is vein if it is not collapsible then it may be artery the central venous catheters are almost always inserted using seldinger technique the vessel is punctured with a sharp hollow needle attached to 5 to 10 ml syringe while advancing constant negative pressure should be applied by gently pulling the plunger back until the blood is uh, aspirated if no blood is aspirated on first pass withdraw the needle slowly while continuing to apply the negative pressure and see whenever there is a blood aspirated detach the syringe to check for free flow of the blood blood and it is important at that point of time to immobilize the needle with one hand so the immobilization with one hand is very very careful otherwise if you move the needle then it may go into a false track so after making a small nick incision the dilator is used to dilate the subcutaneous tissue and the catheter is threaded on to the guide wire and advanced into a vascular lumen the operator has to make sure that the wire is not advanced into the vessel and the catheter uh, is easy to withdraw once the catheter is in place so it is very very dangerous if you leave the catheter inside if you leave the guide wire inside i have seen people uh when they during their training so when they are doing central lines they leave the guide wire inside the body so it is dangerous and then sometimes you have to do you have to take him to the cath lab by using snare we can remove it sometimes you may have to do uh, uh, stenotomy and then you have to do the open heart surgery to remove the guide wires so it is very difficult and you cannot hide it when you do chest x ray or uh, when they do any uh, any uh, uh, any kind of uh, scanning they will find out the guide wire so don't try to uh, cover up things don't don't try to uh, uh, like uh, um, try uh, and keep the things under the carpet without in, in without involving the family always 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 tell the family and then face the family if it happens it happen it happened and then we have to take care of the family and then you have to take care of the patient and then we have to take care of the person who did it and then we have to review his training we have to review his privileges and then we have to ask him to do it under supervision so flushing all the lumens with saline 0.9% immediately helps preventing clotting when securing the central line to skin care should be taken to avoid puncture of any adjacent structures chest x ray should be taken after typical subclavian or jugular line incision with multiple attempts at one or several sites as a mandatory uh, we do chest x ray immediately after percutaneous tracheostomy central line and then the intubations